Hey guys, this is Tim from Twice Circled and welcome to a very special vlog. Uh, so to celebrate the launch of Steam Workshop, we are adding a brand new fish to the game as a mod that everybody can download and get integrated into their game. So here is what's on offer. It is the wonderful Nurse Shark. And you can simply subscribe to the mod in Steam Workshop, link in the description, and it will seamlessly integrate into the rest of the game. But there's more. We're actually going to show you how we made it, so anyone looking to get into modding for Mega Aquarium has somewhere to start. So to do this, I'm going to hand over to Rob, Mega Aquarium's in-game artist, who created all of the animals and models that appear in the game. And he's going to take you step by step through the process of making the 3D model, and then he's going to hand over to me. And afterwards, I'm going to show you how to take that model and put it into a mod. Hi. My name is Rob, and I am the in-game artist for Mega Aquarium. I'm going to explain to you the process of creating a 3D model for use in a Mega Aquarium mod. And here is what we're going to make. A fully animated 3D model of a nurse shark. Ooh. Uh, for the tutorial, I'm going to assume you already know how to use 3D modeling software, and the basics of meshing, texturing, rigging, and animating. If you don't, then there are hundreds of great tutorials online to teach you the basics. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the specific parts of the setup that are required to make your model compatible with Mega Aquarium. So I'm not going to be talking about everything in great detail, just exactly what you need to get your model to work in Mega Aquarium. Uh, here are the topics we will be covering. So I'm going to break it down into two parts. Part one is creating a static model. You of course, don't have to make a fish. You can make whatever you like uh, for your mod. So you, if you're making a, a bin, a tree, a treasure chest, then as a static model, then you'd only need to do part one, which is uh, setting up your project, modeling and UV unwrapping and texturing. But if you do wish to make a living creature or a person or something, then part two is animating that. And that's rigging your model and animating using the take system uh, and then of course exporting it. So what we'll end up with uh, is an FBX file uh, which will contain an animated 3D model of your fish and a PNG texture file. That's it. That is all you'll need. It's those two files. In terms of software, as you might have just seen, I'm using Cinema 4D. I'm on version R19 Visualize. Other versions of Cinema 4D should also work, and also it's possible to create static models, just part one, i.e. no animation, in 3D Studio Max. Unfortunately, Blender is not currently supported, because the program does not support the latest version of FBX in the ASCII format. So, without further ado, uh, let's get into Cinema 4D and start setting up our project. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our project. Um, and we need some guides and reference materials to get our model in the right place, the right size, and the right shape. We first just need to check a couple of global settings, which are these. We need to make sure the project scale is in centimeters, one centimeter, and the frames per second is set to 30. Uh, all the animation in the game is at 30 frames per second. So first we need to get the model the right size. So I'm gonna make a cube and I'm gonna make it 100 by 100 by 100 centimeters because all the fish that we model in the game have to be one meter long and the reason this is is so that uh, the game can scale your fish to the right in-game size as it grows. The next thing we're going to get is a piece of reference material so that we can get our fish the right shape. So I've just brought in a plane and I'm going to create a new material And so here's all my images I've downloaded off the internet of nurse sharks to get an idea of what they look like. And I'm going to use this one, which is an illustration um, of the nurse shark from side view. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply that texture to our plane. So we just need to make sure our plane is the right size. So it needs to be 69 by 38.1. So that's this ratio here, dividing the numbers by 10. And we apply that, as you can see it up here there. 
and let me just turn that and we need to make sure it's pointing our reference material in the positive z direction so along this blue arrow but it's not quite the right size yet it's also a bit blurry so i'm gonna put no scaling on and make it editable i'm gonna shift its anchor point to the very nose of tip of the nose of the shark turn that off and move that to 50 centimeters in the positive Z um, so that it's right on the edge of this uh, one meter cube and scale it up so the tail touches the other end and there you go we have a uh, piece of reference material at one meter long the last thing we need to do is need to make sure that the model is in the right place so I've made two planes there just so I can get some guide guides here for the horizontal and the vertical and I'm going to move my reference material and my one meter cube to have it just there and what I'm doing there is moving the center of gravity the point at which I want the fish to rotate around to the center of the world because when it goes into the game that's the point at which the game will rotate the model around I want it just here in front of the fins behind the gills and that's basically I can hide my two planes now and that's my reference material set up so I would then go on if I had it and I would do a top-down one as well to get the widths right so what you should end up with is something that looks like this Right, now we've got all our guides and references set up to the right in the right position and the right scale, we can start modeling. So I'm going to turn off this cube because we don't need to see that anymore. And I'm going to make a fresh cube, which is going to be our shark model. But let's just scale that down to be roughly the right size and put that in roughly the right position, which is sort of here. We're then going to make it editable and make it see through. We will then cut it in half. So that's MM. That does a connect and delete out one side of it. The reason I'm doing that is because most animals are symmetrical. So I'm going to put a symmetry in, put the cube under that, turn X ray on for that. And now I only have to model one side of the fish and the other side will match. So as you can see, if I grab just this side, the other side moves in. And now it's a matter of starting to line up our model oops, wrong one, uh, with our reference material. I keep doing the wrong one. Uh, that one. I want it on world zero. So I'm putting in a first joint here on the world zero. Let's bring these down. Put that just behind the flipper. I want another joint there. I'm going to delete out some of these ends. Don't need those for now. I'll join those up later. So that sort of start of a shape but he's a bit square so let's bring the top one in and down and bring this one up so this this line here this line here is our widest point as you can see we've sort of got a very rough shark profile so let's start stretching them out we'll bring out another ring there and another one just the heights And so every time we have a, a line here, this is where another point at which we are going to have the shark bending or deforming around. And I'll bring in the, them in as he shrinks down and you can start to see body forming. And it's really just a process, matter of continuing this process over and over, getting more and more detail. You know, we can start breaking down. So this is quite, you know, broad strokes at the moment. Uh, 
we might want to put in another row here so that we can get it a bit more circular and less uh, blocky. And after a lot of time and patience, you will hopefully end up with something that looks a bit like this. Now we have our finished model. It's ready to start unwrapping. So I'm going to turn off the guides because we don't really need those anymore. And we can swing around and have a good look at it. And so to texture this, what we need to do is flatten out this mesh into a UV map. Um, we do it at this point, still with the, the mirror on, because again, the fish is symmetrical. So there's no point in colouring in the two sides different colours. We might as well make them the same. So uh, let's jump into our UV mode. And I've already unwrapped this guy. So you can see is the top part. And the idea of just UV unwrapping is that um, every one of these uh, quads has a corresponding quad on a flat plane and so that when you um, so it knows that the texture that's going to be applied to this point is stretched over this quad here and so here you can see the top part and the, the way I've broken this down is uh, just uh, on natural breaks in the coloring of the shark so the top part of the shark is generally a, um, it's a gray color and the bottom which this bit is a light color so I put a kind of break in here because of the way the flippers go um, it would it wouldn't unwrap flat all as one piece I'd have to break either around here or break around here so I've gone there because these two are the same color and I've just broken down a few other pieces the mouth I do the mouth a different color and this fin was a little awkward, so I've just broken it out into its own piece. I like to keep the fish generally as a whole piece. I find it much easier to get the texture uniform, uh, but you can break it up however you feel works for you. So once we have unwrapped our fish, we then need to create a guide texture for it. So that's new texture. Um, putting on a swatch of black there and we're going to create UV mesh layer and that's just traced all our um, quads and uh, all our polys and made a layer here so that now we have an image which is a black and white outline of our mesh so we'll save that texture as a PNG and that's We'll save it over here, over our Nurse Shark UV. Save. Yeah, we'll replace that. Just close that. Uh, go back to standard view. And that will look, that looks like this. And so we can use this uh, as a guide now for colouring in our texture, which I already have done. And that looks like this, and there's a whole host of ways you can color this in, depending on your preferred um, coloring in package. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that. But now this texture is ready, I will show you how to apply it. So we'll jump back in Cinema 4D. So we need to create a new material, and we're going to put it in the color channel. Make sure the uh, brightness is set to 100% and let's go to our textures, double click on that and the only thing we need to do here is write unshaded for the texture name. Now the reason we do that is that um, in the game none of the fish and the people are, are shaded to make them pop out on the screen and so if you um, if you leave that blank, if you could just write anything in here, um, then it, the game will apply shadows to that object. But if you write in unshaded at the beginning of the name, 
then it will know not to apply shadows. So, um, the FBX importer does support alpha channels. So if you wanted to do a texture with sort of transparent fins or something like that, then you could, uh, then you just bring in another copy of your uh, texture, because I, I export it as a PNG, probably the best thing to do, uh, with an alpha channel, and then it will, when the FBX importer imports it, it will know to apply the alpha channel. But we don't have any alpha, so we're not going to bother with that. And we just apply that to our model. It's a bit blurry. So put that to no scaling. Turn off our lines and we can have a good look at it. And there we have our textured modeled nurse shark. And so that, for the static model, is about it. That we could just export now as a static model. We are going File, Export, FBX. I won't do that now, but at the if you want to see those settings, you just need to skip to the end of the next part, the second video, uh, and I'll be going through all the exporting. So that's it for um, part one. Um, I'll see you in part two. Bye.